Imagine you're amid traffic on the highway. The six cups of coffee were tasting and energizing, but now you're energized in a different way. I think you know what I'm talking about. You're questioning yourself, is there a better way than sit here and and I have to use it? And feeling discomfort and crossing your legs. I have an answer to that. Today, my goal is to persuade all of you to use one of the most convenient forms of transportation. Going from one point to another. Driving on 95 on a Friday or a Sunday to Boston, New York, and so or any other place can be a nightmare. Imagine sitting in traffic for hours with drunk drivers, angry people, and those who can't see and have no reflexes. Let's talk about why taking the train is better when going to big cities. Driving to places like Boston and New York is ill-advised. There are very few places to take a break. Use the restroom, grab a snack, and stretch your legs. When you reach your destination, you have no energy to do whatever was planned. I would recommend the train because it's a lot easier to drive to New London or Old Saybrook and to hop on Shoreline East to New Haven and Metro North to Grand Central or Amtrak to Boston. Who here has sat on I-95 in New Haven or Bridgeport and has had to hit the brakes repeatedly? I'm sure all of you have. Who wants to sit in traffic, especially if you have to be somewhere at a certain time? Depending on the day and time, it's supposed to take roughly two to three hours to get from New London, excuse me, from Lebanon to New York or Boston. But when you're in those jams, add one to two hours more. Have you ever heard traffic jams on the train? No. Which scenario do you prefer? Suppose your answer is, I prefer driving. You might think when you've gone through the jams on the road and gotten moving again, you're in the clear. Think again. There's dangers on the road, and we must always be alert. Like I said at the top, drug drivers, people who can't see, uh, accidents, faulty cars, but remember, you can be a danger to yourself, too. This is where the train can help you. If you've had way too much to drink, take the train. Sleep it off in the comfort of your seat, and when you get home, get a designated driver. As the old saying goes, remember, you drink, you drive, you lose. All right, you avoided the dangers, and you keep on going. It's not clear sailing yet. What about parking? What about using the restroom? As a last reason, who's had to use it, and there was none available? The discomfort of having to wait for one to show up. You can also have an accident in your car. In the state of Connecticut, there are 23 service plazas between 95, 15, and 395. But these are spread out, and you might miss one. For some, stopping on the side of the road is, is the only reasonable thing. But remember, the cops could see you, and they would issue you a ticket. On Amtrak, there's a bathroom in either the front or or back of the car, depending on where you're sitting. Where Metro North and Shoreline East, there's one in every other car. Don't you even feel relaxed knowing this, even when you're not on the rails? Finally making it to your destination. All is well, right? Oh no. Parking is scarce, almost non-existent, 
not to mention expensive in most places. For example, parking at Fenway is forty to fifty dollars versus the four dollars you would pay in Framingham just to take the T. The train doesn't park until it reaches its terminus. So that terminus northbound will be Boston, southbound will be DC. When you get there, take local transportation. In conclusion, if you want to avoid traffic, danger on the road to yourself and arrive fresh and charged up, take the train. Try one of these out. I promise you won't be sorry. And thanks for listening.